4th of July, everybody. Daniel goes back in time and figures out a way to get into the first purge. Plus, Josh and Freckles get small and take on ghosts? Hmm, that sounds interesting. We'll see what Marvel's got for us next. All brand new on this week's Ford Galley PRP. Check it out. What's going on guys? Welcome to Predict the Box Office. Every week I uh, recap how I did in last week's box office and I give you my predictions for this week's box office. So without further ado, let's kick it into last week. So as you can see last week, uh, I actually did pretty good somewhat I guess you can say. I, I, I flipped the third and fourth places, but uh, I got Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom correct, but uh, I was a little over on the money. It only did 60 million compared to my 70 million. Uh, got Incredibles 2 right. I had, I guess 50. It did 46 million. And I flipped Uncle Drew, Uncle Drew and Sicario Day of the Solar Dad. With Sicario doing really nice, doing 19 million. And then Uncle Drew actually had a slow week, only doing 15. And uh, Ocean's Eleven came in with a nice uh, 8 million dollars. So not bad at the boxes. So this week at this week's brand new box office, we actually got a couple new entries. And uh, I feel like this week's winner, like most times, will be a Marvel movie and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think they're going to do actually $85 million out the gate this week. And then I have another brand new newcomer uh, where they decided to go back in time and give you the first Purge. And I think the first Purge is going to do well because it's a horror and it always does well. I think it's going to actually do $35 million. And then I have Incredibles 2 in third place doing $30 million, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom doing twenty five, and Sicario Day of the Solar Dead doing eleven. So yeah, folks, that's my predictions for this week's box office. Like I said, you got Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out, directed by Peyton Reed, starring Paul Rudd and Evangelina Lilly. Also got The First Purge, directed by Gerald McMurray, starring Yali Noli and Lex Scott Davis. Also in a few theaters this week, in case you get to see it, you got Sorry to Bother You, starring Boots Riley. I mean, sorry, directed by Boots Riley, starring Lakeith Stanfield and Miss Tessa Thompson. All right, so there's this week's Predict the Box Office. Uh, we're going to kick it over to uh, this week's reactions at the trailers. Only a couple, but stick around because it's a holiday. Let's go. And welcome to the reaction This is the, re <laughs> the reaction part of our show. I'm P. Bowling <laughs> with me and being loud as always, Mrs. A. T. <laughs> 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 it's a holiday week, folks. Happy Fourth of July to all. So, you know, there's not a lot of trailers out this week. So, there's only going to be three of them this week. We're going to hit you with a couple and, uh, yeah, move on. Yeah. Okay. You ready? All right. So, we're going to hit you now with the summer of 84. Let's kick it to the trailer. Today, Chronicle received a letter from an individual calling themselves the Cape May Slayer. There's a serial killer on the loose. What else could possibly be this exciting? Incoming titties. 12 o'clock. Guys, Nikki Keshuba. Scientifically the perfect woman. Huh. Better view of my room than I thought. Silly dreams. Emergency meeting. Treehouse. Now. Mackie is the Kate May Slayer. Mackie's a cop. <laughs> We're back, and that was the summer of '84, folks. That comes out this August 10th, 2018. <laughs> it's got multiple directors. Uh, one of them is uh, Francois, and uh, I cannot pronounce the other one. I'm very sorry. Uh, Luke. <laughs> yes, Tari Graham, Varucci, and Judith Lewis. Whew. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. I, I was reading the wrong. Yeah, so uh, oh. what do you think? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's just like. Okay, well, like what he said is Goonies it. Well, I didn't, say it, I didn't say it to you, but we said, we said we were it out loud. As we were watching it. Yeah. It was Goonies it and uh, Stranger, Stranger things. things mixed into one. And to me, it looks like a bunch of kids asking all their friends, be like, ooh, let's make a film. Let's make a scary movie. It seems so like acted out. It looks like just, they're really trying hard. They're I, mm -mm. I love the nostalgic and I love Stranger Things and I like the way that it played on but this is a very bad cheaply yeah, done like version it. and they're really pushing for that nostalgic factor and it's not hitting for real. Mm -mm. Yeah, that wasn't, <clears throat> I don't know, that won the film festival in Sundance so uh, we'll see if it gets a different response for the fans. Alright, uh, let's kick it over to the new Mark Wahlberg movie Mile 22. I need a new vehicle ASAP. This is an Overwatch operation. Our team is engaged in a higher form of patriotism. Gun, 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 gun. It's not a military operation. The goal is to complete. <laughs> <laughs> and there was mile 22. 
coming out August 17th, 2018, directed by Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg. Starring Mark, I'm sorry, starring Mark Wahlberg and Laura Cohen. Go ahead, get your, get your piece out. What do you think of Mile 22? I am so done with action movies. All of you are going to be like, they're so cool. I've got they're the same thing over and over again. This movie's about trying to save someone in the heist. Every movie's about a heist. Like, as I keep watching these trailers, I'm like, they're the same thing over and over again. Like, yeah. Some people are not inventive. This one looks way over the top. Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg have been on a roll. Lone Survivor, um, Deep Horizon, uh, The Patriot have been pretty good movies, but... This one does seem a little crazy. This was like a Mission Impossible mixed with Jason Bourne trying to be all cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't care. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, here's our last show of the week, guys. This is the house with the clock in its wall. That's safe. As long as it's fed. Do you know what a warlock is, Lewis? A boy witch. I think they're a little more than boy witches. Are you saying that you're a warlock? Please teach me, please, please. Okay, have it your way. I can give you the right books, teach you the right spells. Wait. Oh, wait. And there, and there was the house with the clock in its walls, directed by Eli Roth, starring Jack Black and Kate Blanchett. So what do you think? Mm, that's a good concept. Yeah, I think we ended on a high note. I really like that trailer. Jack Black being anything... Uh, kid wise book created him getting to be Jack Black he's a funny person he's awesome Jack Black's awesome he's absolutely amazing uh, and him playing off of Kate Blanchett looks like a great combination I like the concept it's cool like mm-hmm. wizards and uh, warlocks living in a house with a magical clock I'm all for it I mean it's all fantasy why not it seems like fun mm-hmm. he's got a good concept but you know this is not going to be the only one. If this is really good, they're going to, you know, do a they second one. They make a second one. Well, they're going to have to. They, they have to do sequels, especially if it comes out so good. they got to expand the story somehow. <laughs> all right. Well, there is our trailer for this week's, folks. It's, I hope you guys all enjoyed your fourth. Uh, stick around. we got two guys giving you a little previews of this week's movies. First, got the first purge with the killer. And uh, <laughs> Ant-Man and Wasp and comic book guys back to tell you all about it. So, uh... Till next time, guys, check out these previews. Woo! Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or wherever you might be. I'd like to wish you a very merry day. Killer here. Uh, I've been asked to, uh, to talk to you about the latest in the horror franchise at the cinemas. Oh, Cookie? Mmm, they're very good. Ah. Uh, I love the cinemas. I remember before I murdered my family, I used to enjoy taking them to the cinemas and watching all the scary movies, especially the one about Hannibal Lecter. He's such an inspiration to me. Well, this week at the box office, oh, I'm sorry, the cinema, the uh, film studio, The Purge, has decided to go back in time and bring us The First Purge. So, like all true killers, who doesn't want to restart the beginning? I know if I had a chance to change the ones I kill, I would do a lot differently. But enough about myself. So this week, if you're looking for something new and something very gruesome at the cinemas, go check out The First Purge. Because this time, they're going to do it right. And in case you see me in the streets, I'd run if I were you. Hi guys, comic book guy here again. Whew. It's been a busy summer and this week it just gets even better. This week at the box office we get the new edition of the Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's right folks, Marvel bought back the sequel to Ant-Man. Director Peyton Reed is back for a second term after the disappointment of Mr. Edgar Wright who's going to direct and write the first one. But you know him and some conflicts which you know you can't mess with Mr. Feige. Mr. Feige's the man, and if he says you gotta go, you gotta go, buddy. So, after doing a great job on the first one, Mr. Peyton Reed's back. And, of course, we got the we coming back of Mr. Paul Rudd and Evangeline Illy So, I'm excited. I don't know about you, but we finally get the Wasp on the big screen. That means all the original Avengers are now officially a part of the Avengers and are on the big screen. And this is going to have some big implications for Avengers 4. So, after that horrible, horrible, horribly ending of... Uh, you know, Infinity War. I'm still sad. 
I think we're going to get a little lightheartedness and we're going to have a lot of fun. So this week, go check it out, guys, because Ant-Man and Wasp are going to be big and small. They're going to go all the way to your heart. All right, guys. Till next time. Bye.